Good morning and welcome to On the Record with Buddy Cianci. My guest this morning is no stranger to you if you've uh, had anything to do with politics in Rhode Island, the economy. He's, uh, but he wasn't always an economist, if I can use that term to describe him. He was a professional baseball player, played for uh, the Montreal uh, team, also played for, uh, for the Red Sox and played for the Expos, I believe. And the Twins. And the Twins, the Twins, the Expos and the Twins. And of course, now he's head of the an organization called the Center for Prosperity and Freedom, a Harvard University graduate. We will not hold that against him. <laughs> Mike Stanhouse. How are you doing, Mike? Merry Christmas, Mike. Merry Good Christmas. Thank, you. Thanks Happy for holidays being here. To your listeners. Yes. Well, viewers, I should well, say. Well, thank you. Okay. Um, I want to start off because you, you tell everybody who is the Freedom, what is the Freedom, the Center for Freedom and Prosperity before we start uh, talking about what they stand for. Wh who are they? Yeah, we're a nonprofit, nonpartisan uh, research and advocacy firm when it comes to public policy. You're nonprofit, though. We're a nonprofit, nonpartisan. We work exclusively on state issues, pretty much focused entirely on economic and educational issues as well. We don't, we don't really get into the social issues. Okay, now well, let's get into some economic issues. One of the big deals that we have going on now, and it's going to come up and raise its head again in the le next legislative season, which is only a month or so away, tolls. Now, you guys have come up at the Center for Prosperity and Freedom. You know, uh, other people have said, you know, w well, the governor has said we have to toll, no question about it, go with revenue bonds. It's going mm -hmm. to cost a billion, 100 million to, to put $500 million out there or so on roads. And it seems like an extraordinary amount of interest to pay for, uh, for, for what we're getting. And then, of course, there's other people like Mr. Sass, a colleague of yours, but uh, uh, in the same business as you, giving advice all the time, uh, said that we, he thinks we can fund this thing strictly by, uh, by pay-as-you-go. You have to have revenue stream from, some, 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 from somewhere, but we can fund it pay-as-you-go. You have a whole different idea on the tolls, don't you? Well, we have a different idea on the delivery, but, but yeah. if I could make one on pre yeah. previous, I, I think the toll plan as proposed shows a lot of what's wrong with public policy in Rhode Island. We automatically look to raise new revenues rather than try to prioritize the revenues we already have. So we keep adding and adding and adding on to costs for Rhode Islanders in some form of fee or tax, and that's a mistake. Uh, we automatically are giving, going to give the money, it looks like, to a very dysfunctional as the governor used in her own words, Rhode Island Department of Transportation, who has shown they're not very effective in managing well, They're not, not, not going to qualify for the Harvard Business School Award of the right, Year, right. for sure. Right. We automatically accept the high labor costs and prevailing wage uh, that, that goes with massive projects like this, which tax on another 15, 20 percent. And then, and then we look to, to raise the money via more debt, in, which only enriches Wall Street uh, financiers. So we we, uh, so we, we agree with the PAYGO approach, but our value add to this was what we call a public-private partnership. A Describe two. what that means. On, uh, well, how does a private-public partnership manifest itself in, in a, on a, 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 a highway? Yeah, I'll keep it very simple. Um, basically, instead of the Rhode Island Department of Transportation being the general contractor for the bid, for uh, the project, we, we, subcon we general contracted out to a private sector partner. Such as? Well, it could, it could be any firm that bids. There's, there's big firms. Bechtel or someone like that. or I don't even have a suggestion oh, for okay. it, but it would right. be a big a firm. A private company. It, yep, that, that, that knows how to manage big construction projects like this, and they subcontract. The beauty of this is they get the work done faster, but most importantly. Don't we do that anyway? We hire a company to do, to do the road construction? Yeah, in the end, it's private companies that do the work, but, right. it's, but it's the state that basically general contracts them, right? And, and and, yeah. and they accept the change orders, which drives up the price, like the big dig went up in Boston. Yeah. So to avoid that, under a P3, there's a What's guaranteed a P3? public-private partnership. The three Ps, okay. Yep, guaranteed to deliver the project at the stated price. No further risk to taxpayers for cost overruns, change orders, big dig type, you know, overruns. That's the beauty of this, because we know this project isn't going to end at, at what the bid Where price Where has this was. worked before? Oh, dozens of states. Pennsylvania is the most recent one. Uh, they, they had what they called a rapid rid bridge replacement program, about the same size as what we're talking about in Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. and, and they did it under a public-private partnership. These are used uh, a lot for... Um, so you go to bid and, and, and have yep. companies that will bid this they and say, for bid. a certain price, we'll fix all these That's roads. Right. And maintain them. And maintain them for 25 for 20 years. years. 25 years. And yeah. how much do we... And then we have to pay them over have the course of years. have to pay them. So instead of paying... 
You're not adding an extra layer on, though. You've already got a department. No, of you're actually you're actually reducing you're reducing costs, reducing time, increasing quality, and reducing risk to the taxpayers. That's a pretty good. Have management. they been successful with this in places like Pennsylvania? Well, uh, the Pennsylvania one's just getting underway, but it's projected not only to save 20 to 30 percent overall cost, but it's expected to get the project Why done. Why can they do it cheaper and the state can do it, uh, has to pay more money? Because they're incentivized to find... Are they union? Uh, in they, uh, depending on the bid process, in Pennsylvania's case, yes. Okay. But they can save money in procurement efficiencies, in design and innovation. Public sector is not incentivized to look for savings. It's not a f incentivized to look for, because they can just keep going back to the taxpayer for more money. But when, you, when you're contractually bound to a number, you have to find innovative and quality solutions, and that, that saves you money. You don't even know the, name of it. You don't know the names of any of these companies that have done? Who's doing it in Pennsylvania? Um, Plenary Walsh is the name of the company, I believe, in Pennsylvania. I don't know who they are. Yeah. They're a big but that, in other words, firm. the state says, okay, Plenary Walsh, you're going to fix these well, it'd be a bid miles process. of roads. It'd be a bid process. Yeah, and they come in and they say, this is the number. There are no change orders. That's, That's it. That's right. No change That's orders. That's right. And they're, they're, they're AAA companies, to, to use the word right. AAA. And they come in and then they maintain the roads for 25 years at a certain price. You, does that mean you eliminate the Department of Transportation? They plow the roads? They oh, plow no, no. The, the Department of Transportation would you know, still the, do all the other work it's contracted to do around the state, maintaining roads, plowing roads, everything okay. else it does. It's just right. this specific bridge and road repair project. Yeah. No, Let, the, let's try to do it more efficiently. The chance of that passing is about as much chance of me being uh, <laughs> picked to be an astronaut uh, for the next uh, moon mission. So, uh, so uh, why do you come up with these ideas that basically, and you're, you're a well-respected organization, it's non-profit, <coughs> you're always testifying up there, you have, you know, you're lobbying to yep. the extent, you know, for the non, yep. as much as a non-profit can do. W why do you Great come up question. with these, 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 these ideas? Like our sales tax idea, right? It wasn't well, going to get pass. into that. Yep. Yeah, w but why do you, why do you kind of waste time? Because you know this will never pass. Now, our mission is to provide alternative solutions to what the status quo failed status quo, I think many Rodons would agree, uh, process. So we, we, we're trying to educate lawmakers, the media, the public, that there are alternative ways right. to do business and to conduct public policy. Eventually, someone's going to pick up and run with one of our ideas, all and right. it is going to work. But like, we, we have to stop this right. mindset of doing it the oh. same old way all okay, the time. Okay, sales taxes. You come up with a program on sales taxes. Tell everybody what that's about. Well, we were, that's really where we became, eliminate them, right? Yeah, well, our original proposal was totally eliminate the sales tax as the best means of <laughs> economic development. Tell us about that. Well, we would have lost some net revenues. Right. But we wouldn't have lost all the revenues that the sales tax produces. You would have completely eliminated one of the biggest revenue sources we have in the state of Rhode Island. Uh, you would just forget about it. Let's just put it roughly at a billion dollars. Okay, the taxpayers are not going to pay a billion dollars. It would have stimulated some business. It would have brought in people. I think your big thing was it would have built warehouses. We'd have been a logistics and a transportation center and all that kind of stuff. So we would have we would have got back by so our guys calculations. Yeah, well, we would have got back. But here's the trade-off. Every everything is a trade-off, and and why shouldn't we at least think of this? We would have got back six, seven hundred million dollars because of the increased number of jobs and everything else through income tax, other fees and taxes because the economic activity would have increased by five or ten percent in the state. So the question is, for, for about a two or three hundred dollar million dollar net loss in revenue, is it worth adding ten, twenty thousand jobs to the state's economy and growing the state's economy by five or ten percent? If you could guarantee over a period of time that wasn't too short or wasn't too long, rather, uh, that uh, that you could add those kinds. But of But that's jobs. an interesting proposition. Yeah, you came up with this right? a couple of years ago. I remember. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's talk about uh, other things. Sure. That uh, that now the governor is probably on another TV station today saying uh, all her accomplishments. She came out with a, a, a program called uh, not a program but a video on YouTube saying it's working. Hmm. Um, uh, what is the opinion of the Center for Prosperity uh, that you think it's working? The first year, she's invested to her credit. She's invested in in um, or, or got the state to invest in some tax breaks or tax uh, credits for uh, creating jobs. Uh, also, she's been uh, instrumental in making sure that 195 gets off on the right start, yep. and I don't know how far along we are there. She's funded uh, some education to her credit. She's done some, some, some wonderful things, but also the state, I look at your report card for the state of Rhode Island, <laughs> and uh, we couldn't get into uh, 
uh, you know, you couldn't get into reform school with a scorecard, let alone <laughs> Harvard. Okay, <laughs> so so, uh, so so tell me what's working and what's not working. Well, this this report card first was not reflective of this governor's. Right, um, exactly. This is really a, a ref reflection, probably, of the last 10 to 20 years of public yep. policy, and we'll get into that more in a second, uh, but it, because it doesn't paint a pretty picture. I think it's a little too early to talk about the governor, although uh, the governor's stats. Um, it's been a year, almost. Stats, yeah, but, but, uh, but economically, it, it, takes it takes months and months and years. But do you think sometimes. we're on the right track? Do you think no. that's so? You don't think we're okay. No. Tell us why we're not on the right track. Well, you and I had this debate on radio last week. We, we don't agree with the, um, tax, the credits. tax credits, which we would categorize as corporate welfare. As, as the primary means for economic development. We believe it could be part of a larger, broader-based economic development plan, like cutting broad-based taxes. Well, what about historic tax credits? You're not in favor of those? Tax credits for, you know, CVS creates a lot of jobs because they get a tax credit. Uh, if they create jobs worth a certain amount of money a year, because the, the theory being that the money's going to well, come back to the state at form of income tax. Well, you have to remember, as, an econ a, as a politician, they only look at, like you said, the jobs. As an economist, and I have an economics degree from Harvard, you have to look at both sides of the equation. So while there might be some benefits because of the money you spend or give away, there's a, there's a cost on the other side when 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 the rest of us. But Mike, have you're to not pay. giving the money away. This is where you and I maybe sure confused. we are. You're giving if if you say we're going to give a tax credit uh, as for historical building as an example. Yeah. And that gives the incentive for the developer to come in and do the project, and he's going to get a tax credit, which means he can. If he spends a million dollars, he's going to get $250,000 of tax credits. That $250,000 of tax credits would never have existed, and the state never would have gotten that money but for the fact that he was incentivized to do the project. So the jobs would not have been created, the building would not have been fixed, and we wouldn't have restored a historic building. I mean, uh, uh, and no jobs would have been created, no revenue to the state of Rhode Island. So it would have been really nothing. Nothing would have happened. No, no revenue, no nothing, that, no building that's fixed. But that's only part of the picture. Well, tell me the rest of it. The rest of the picture is, is somebody is going to deduct that $250,000. Now, a lot of these companies, as you know, yep. sell their tax credits yeah, they to do. someone else they do. who reduces their, their income to the state. So, so th there's less income to the state, which means the rest of us well, what have about to the pay people? higher fees okay. and taxes to make up for it. And that impact has a downward push on the economy okay. and it happens in immeasurable unnoticeable ways. I'll walk that step with you. I'll okay. walk, but what about the jobs that were created in order to for the construction jobs as an example to redo that building the painters the carpenters the plumbers who wouldn't be working but for the rest restoration of that building. Yep. What about the property taxes that that building was not paying but now it's going to have to pay because it's been restored. Yep. What about the businesses that, were that are now going to go in that building and pay a sales tax with, on things well, that the, they sell. The businesses that go on that building are probably going to move from somewhere else, so it's probably not a net well, gain. You know, yeah, they, well, they pro I, you know, just like at Chapel Hill, you know, Panera Bread was over yeah, there, uh, now uh, they moved uh, over well, there. That, you you know, know, that's one example. Okay, well, but, but, but the fact is, so you don't think that, that they, they've done a... Uh, what, I'm, what we're saying is... These tax credits don't work, if we If we look at tax credits, exclusively tax credits, as the economic development strategy is it part for the, of the state puzzle? of Rhode Island... But that's the only p part of the puzzle we're seeing right now, is oh. tax, what we call tax giveaways. All we're seeing are tax giveaways being disguised as economic corporate, development. We call, you call, we're going to take a break. We call that, it corporate welfare. Corporate yeah. welfare. And who are the biggest recipients of corporate welfare in the state of Rhode Island, real quick? Well, CVS and CBS Fidelity, CVS and Fidelity are the biggest yep. ones. Okay, now if we didn't give them th those, they'd still be here if we didn't give them those tax credits? I don't know. Well, we wouldn't lose All them, I'm saying you? is there's a cost to it. All right, with no question about it. All right, we're going to take a little break. We'll come back to talk more about the Center for Freedom and Prosperity with Mike Stanhouse. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. <laughs> Here we are back again on, on the record with Buddy Sienzi, my guest Mike Stenhouse from the Center for Freedom and Prosperity. Um, there's a study going on right now uh, by the Brookings Institution, uh, which is in Washington, D.C., a well-respected kind of left-wing kind mm -hmm. of liberal organization. And they're studying the Rhode Island economy. It's a question of how they're being paid. They're being paid by, I think, some private individuals to come in and, and study the economy of the state of Rhode Island. Are you familiar with that study? Well, we're, we're, we... Uh, I we're familiar with what's been commissioned. Yeah, commissioned. Um, we, I went to in Newport last uh, well, November, maybe yeah. a uh, preview of, of the findings. Uh, I think just this recent week there was another preview event that the governor is hosting. I didn't go to. Mm -hmm. um, 
We, we know Brookings. Uh, we've looked at some of their work in other states. What are they uh, supposed to be doing for us this time? For, for a, a, about a million bucks, I think, or yeah, whatever 1. it is. 1.3 million. Uh, 1. 3 Rhode million. Island Foundation, other supporters of the governor have, have, commission, have funded the commission you know, of the study. Um, th they're hinting that they're, they're calling it STEAM. You know, we used to have the STEM yeah, industries. Now, STEAM now they added science, an A in there uh, yeah. for, I forget what the A stands for. Oh, uh, I think I know what it stands for. I think it's, uh, well, we'll think about it. But it's, it's, it's science, technology, technology education. Yeah, educa and, yeah. Science, technology, yeah, um, medical, I think, yeah, uh, yeah. or technology yeah. and something else, yeah. But anyway, it, it appears as All if those it's, it's going to be what we were just talking about, that, that, that their, their philosophy is going to be that if the government uh, provides preferential tax treatment, whether it's in the form of uh, credits or, or whatever, to certain industries, uh, that, that that's going to increase uh, economic growth in the state. Uh, so, so again, it's the same argument, and that's why we're very concerned about the study that we just have, because, again, we don't believe that economic development should be based on tax giveaways. So that's, that's not true economic development. True economic development happens virally in a good business climate where people and businesses just grow on their own without necessarily needing the help of government. And it's this whole idea that government has to centrally plan an economy that we disagree with. That's not the way a free market economy. So you works. don't you don't feel uh, you're definitely not a Keynesian economist. Uh, I'm definitely not a Keynesian yeah, you're, you're economist. Not, you're not a Keynesian. Okay, we so we call it an Austrian or free market. Is all right. Uh, so so but you have to give them some credit for at least trying to do some good. I mean, Brookings, but you think they have an agenda of their own, which is that was uh, well, yeah, and that's our other concern is is uh, the the people who are you know who introduced the Brookings to us in November in Newport. Uh, basically said this is a continuation, you know, of the work they've been doing before, and it, what they were referring to there was the roadmap Rhode Island work, so which you, you guys completely opposed because you said it it would be too oppressive to local government yep. and local living styles. Is that right? Yep. The idea is uh, this is a federal, if not international, agenda that's being, I believe, forced on Rhode Island. And this Brookings Institution study we are expecting is only going to further the roadmap Rhode Island strategy. Which wasn't passed by the legislature, but is put on the shelf in, a, in the planning department. Oh no, it's it's alive and it's it's working. Well, it th wasn't passed by the legislature, though, was it? It was pre-approved and passed by the planning council, yeah, and now well, local governments throughout the state have to comply and, with it. And state agencies are, even though the the speaker said it's on the shelf, it's it's alive on that shelf. It's alive and, and, on and that and shelf. And it's got long tentacles. And in other words, you can't if you were going to build. Uh, uh, build in a neighborhood, you have to make sure there are so many units that are affordable yep, they housing. they call it high density, mixed use uh, building. They, they support and you think these growth centers. And yeah. you think that Brookings is just an extension of all of that? Well, that's what it sounds like. They're going to pick targeted industries, targeted companies, and targeted geographies. That sounds like a growth center to me. Yeah. And, and, and in order to acquire that land, you're going to have to change local zoning laws and build on it, and you're going to have to infringe on people's property rights, potentially by eminent domain. You have presented to me report card on Rhode Island's competitiveness. Ah. Uh, you put <laughs> this out every so often, and uh, it doesn't. It's not a pretty picture of Rhode Island. What do you think has to be? Well, we're the 30th in personal income tax rate. That's not that bad, by the way, out of 50. Right. We're the 45th uh, state in the union as far as U.S. rankings are concerned for state business tax cl climate index. That's not good. And so when in economic freedom index, whatever that is, 44th. Uh, median household income, we're, 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 we're 13th. That's not bad. Unemployment rate, we're 34th. Labor force participation, we're 17th. Spending per pupil, we're 43rd in the country. Is that right? Well, that's, that's, that, one's a, that one was a little subjective. Mm -hmm. We spend among the highest. Yep. The question is, is, if you're spending a lot but getting low value, is that good or bad? We rank that as bad because we're getting poor value for Yeah, that. because you're, you're, we're, we're, we're right. the, uh, you know, we're, as far as the rankings, as far as we are going. Spending doesn't well, we determine we saw that with it. the park results, yeah. the park yeah. test, if, they, if you can count those as, 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 as uh, legitimate. But anyway, so if, we're, if we've done all these things in the past, well, we, you know, we've always tried to pick winners and losers. We've had the 38th yep. studio example. Yep. This is not a good report card for the state of Rhode Island's economic climate. What do you think needs to be done? I mean, just coming up with a f a fantasy ideas that aren't going to pass, like the three P's, you know, the public yeah. partnership, uh, public pri private partnership for roads, you know that's going to happen around here. But what will happen is, uh, is if you can pick a couple of things, 
that will make a big difference. What do you think is the most important thing we've got to do? We've got a new governor, relatively new. Uh, she doesn't have the same philosophy you have. She wants to no. pump start or jump start yep. the economy with tax credits and yep. all that. We know the pension system is not cured, uh, which also is this big yep. cloud hanging over us because it's not earning the kind of return that it should be earning. It's only earning 2.2 percent when they expected 7.5 percent. So our unfunded liability is starting to go up again. It's going to cost the taxpayers right. money. What can we do to jumpstart the economy as far as the center of freedom and prosperity is concerned? All right, so the two philosophies, you know, it's our report card reflects it. You and I talked on the show last year about our spotlight on spending report, which again highlights a lot of tax, corporate welfare, and other giveaways. You say CVS gets it, Fidelity gets it. So obviously if, we, if we've been doing all of that kind of stuff for so long and we're getting these kinds of results, you know, these aren't ranked by us. These are ranked by credible third-party national organizations. Yeah. Obviously, that strategy is not working, right? Okay, so what will work according to the Center for Freedom and Prosperity? So we should look to Kansas. We should look to North Carolina. But we're not Kansas. Well, two states we're, that we're, enacted... We're not right-to-work states, you know that. Yeah, but broad-based tax and regulatory reform okay. is what we need. Now, right-to-work is a free major reform that would immediately help our state. Right. It's politically unpopular, but you want an economic solution, it's free, it costs nothing, and it will provide immediate economic impetus well, let's to our not state. Talk about, but let's we not don't even have to go there. Yeah, okay. Broad-based tax reform, sales tax, estate tax, corporate tax, income tax, broad-based regulatory reform. You look here, we have a terrible legal and climate. Lawsuit climate in the state is horrible. The regulatory climate from all the agencies is horrible. The, uh, the minimum wage is high. The unemployment insurance well, tax is high. Well, people want to raise the minimum high. wage. They want to raise well, the minimum it, wage. it's counterproductive to growing your economy. Okay. So, so these are just some of the, this is what this report card shows, is that all, all of these areas need to be worked on. We, we have maximized revenues and regulation in so many areas in this state. That's why we're opposed to a new fee like a toll. We, we're maxed out. You know, it's one more straw on the camel's back could be it. We need to start unburdening businesses, unburdening people, but selecting individual businesses with tax credits doesn't help the average guy. And how many people really believe that our government can plan our economy? See the kind of message you're talking about here. There are people watching this show. I have all kinds of politicians on with all kinds of, you know, they're, they're, saying, they're, they're saying things that people have controversy with or, this, or, or that are controversial. You have a very controversial issue here. Um, but the fact is, not a lot of people understand this. Not a lot of people who are driving to their, their, their going to, coming back from church this morning, they turn on a TV, or they, they're busy driving their kid to school. They, they don't pay attention to this stuff, nor should they. Well, maybe they should, but they don't because they don't have the time. But when you look at where we are in spending and where we are in, in taxes and where we are in jobs and growth, uh, we've got some problems here. So you how see, do you how do you take your message and make we, it understandable to the ordinary person watching TV? Yeah, this morning? we believe in the power of the individual. We believe in the power of the small business owner. Uh, that if we leave more money with them and give you the, the chance to spend your money the way you think it's best and, and invest it where you think is best, that that will be much more powerful than the government bureaucrats. But that can to only happen. That can only happen when you have elected people who are willing to take that aspect uh, or take that philosophy on. And in Rhode Island, you're not going to have that philosophy ever take hold. Well, uh, we, not, don't, not we don't think ever. We've, we've seen other states uh, change. And this is why we do things like our report card to demonstrate to legislators that your ways of the past, uh, that the status quo political policy culture up there is killing our state. And this is why when the, you translate it to the ordinary Rhode Islander, this is why a, a mother and father will say, we, uh, we, our kid can't get a job in Rhode Island, so he has to move to right. Connecticut or New York or California or someplace, and we don't see our grandkids. It's why the guy who wants to stay here after he retires can't afford to die here because of the estate taxes. Yep. Uh, th those are the things that people understand. That's right. Uh, as opposed to, uh, you know, to me sitting on a TV show talking about uh, competitive indexes and all that kind of stuff. It's why your kid can't why your kid can't get a job here because of these this report card. It's why it's why we, we, we you, 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 you can't afford to die here, but he moves out of here. It, it's it's those are the reasons it's why it's tough to start a business here because of the regulations. Yep. Those are the things people have got to understand if in fact they want to change the mindset 
and make sure that our state can prosper in a different way. You just did my job better than I did, <laughs> and, and shame on me. But, 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 but you're uh, right, it is a kitchen table issue. These yeah. are kitchen table issues. They're not, a, they're not econ they're economic issues, and they need a professional economist like yourself and others. But it's got to be, in order for this to happen, the change, it's got to be translated to everyday guys driving down the street in this car. Yeah, and what it's going to take, honestly, I mean, it, it's, we're not going to be able to change it on our own, but uh, hopefully a future political leader will understand this and be in a position to, to when the state use gets the in bully crisis, pull. When it gets in crisis, when the state's going to go bankrupt, the state can't go bankrupt, but when it does, when it gets on the verge there, and when people, the unemployment rate gets so high and people don't come in here to do business, you know, right now we're kind of plugging along, staggering along, and people aren't satisfied, but they're willing to accept the lifestyle. They accept the politicians they have. It and all comes down to the yeah. politicians in the state house, doesn't right. it? That's right. Well, does. they have the will, the desire, the determination to make these changes happen. Well, we're trying to educate them, A. We're trying to build public support so that they, we can create an environment where they feel safer uh, going against the status quo. Yeah. Um, but you're right, it, ha it has to begin with the kitchen table grassroots people who have to understand that this affects their pocketbooks, and you this have affects the, their families' and futures in this state. And you have to have politicians with, with the gumption and the fortitude in certain parts of their anatomy to come up and, and take the unpopular position that appears to be unpopular, but it becomes the popular pos position if they want a better life for their kids and their grandkids. Well, it's easy to go along with the status quo, but yeah. I, I believe most politicians are up there because they want to make a difference. I'm not sure they all know what that can be, so that's where we come in and try no, to provide that I'll alternative close by saying Winston Churchill, one of my favorite guys, yeah, love him. said uh, the difference between a politician and a state and statesman is that a politician gives the people what they, what they want and a statesman gives them what they need. But the trick is to get the, get the people to believe that what they, what they need is what they want. And then if you can get that across, like then that you become <laughs> a great statesman. Yeah, you like that story about the hat, too, with uh, Winston Churchill. Okay, thanks so much. The Center for Freedom and Prosperity's Mike Stenhouse. Thank you, us. always. Former baseball player, but economist. Uh, stay tuned for more. But thanks for being with us, and Merry Christmas. And uh, stay tuned for more great programming on Channel 6, your ABC affiliate for Southeastern New, Southeast New England. Thanks for watching. Have a great afternoon.